Florida. We are all excited to be here and start this podcast. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Do turkeys run with stallions? That's two days that we've been part of the Moving Titan Retreat, where one of the final questions were, are you the stallion or are you going to be the turkey? Because they don't run together. Hi, I'm Mark Hershey, owner of Salmon's Transfer, located in Vancouver, BC, and also host of Movified, the podcast where we interview moving company owners and just want to sit back, chill, and relax and learn about our businesses and then have some fun at it and have some fun moving experiences. I am so blessed to have some of my boys here today. We have Nikal Murdoch with Murdoch's Moving in Stores located in Chico, California. What's up, Nikal? Hi. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate being here a lot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you. This isn't an interview. We got Matt Young with iHall. I move and also owner of movingletters.ai at the Moving Titans Retreat. If you did not go by his booth, I am highly disappointed with you. I want you to stop this podcast right now and thank like you, do not travel back in time. Travel back in time, <laughs> rewind, and make sure you visit it and at least. Uh, checked out the letters because this is an amazing um, option for your company to enhance your brand and also get these letters out to potential customers in a unique way. Matt, welcome. Hey, thank you, Mark. You know, we're uh, having a great time down here in Tampa and it's been freaking amazing, dude. I've had such a great time with you guys. I was looking so forward to hanging out. Um, don't take anything away from Zach's introduction. I'll stop now. Well, I just got one question for you, Matt. Are you a mover? Are you a mover? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we laugh because, you know, the background of that is that, you know, I do the, you know, obviously the sponsorship here on Moverfied and I made that little commercial. It's like, are you a mover? And now it's like an inside joke. And I just Anyone? can't get enough. <laughs> Go for it, Zacharina. Well, am I going to get an intro? Or <laughs> I just got to there like our fish. A good intro. Uh, and last but not least, we have... And not the shortest, but actually, yes, the shortest. <laughs> we, we have Zach here. Zach, if you haven't had an opportunity to sit down with this amazing individual, I mean... He is so great. If if you were watching this video right now, I'm patting his back and got my arm around him. He is just one of the most humble guys I've ever met. He every time he sees my kids, he always wants to like FaceTime them and say hi. They call him Uncle, Uncle Zach. Zach. They are awesome. And kids. Uh, and you're just great. I really appreciate our friendship. He comes from like Remedy Payment Solutions. He has been uh, yeah. like really heavily involved with the MovingLetters.ai as well too. Right now. And he was manning that booth these last two days, making sure that anybody that had questions was taken care of. And you have a lot of follow-ups to do. I heard that booth was one of the most popular ones there. So first of all, that was by far the most heartfelt intro out of the group. And I appreciate that. Thanks, buddy. Uh, yeah, I just got, hey, this is Nick Hell from Chico. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But to catch the chase, yes, I am a booth bitch. I have been traveling the conference circuit for six years in the industry, seven years. And it's, it, it's, uh, it's something I love to do. I love to meet new people, talk about really quality products like ours. I'm going to say it one more time. That's moving letters, AI, um, but if we didn't get to meet you in Tampa or at the booth, we look forward to meeting you in the future. And um, no. God, it's really good to be back in the saddle with Mr. Mark Hershey and the boys. Oh, heck yeah, man. Now, if you're hearing background noise, that's because we are sitting here in Tampa Bay, Florida at Top Golf, waiting for our flights this <laughs> afternoon yeah. and wanted to get together one last time and enjoy this moment and then also kind of have a debrief. I think, you know, even the way I started off, I might not go into saying, are you a turkey or a stallion? Yeah. For each one of you. <laughs> it was uh, a very inspiring. I think one of my posts, I said, you know, it really built stronger relationships. If you did not make a network of individuals in your area or someone that you could work with out of this trip and take away at least 10 pages of inspiring motivating material 10 pages minimum minimum yeah uh, you really missed out 
And I feel like you need to like rewind that clock and try and find someone that has got a copy of all the speakers that were on uh, these last few days. And a big shout out to uh, Wade Swinkle, Chad Coatney, Faith, John Hamilton, John Hamilton, PM, uh, like all those boys that and ladies that put together the Moving Titan Retreat. Definitely, if you haven't Nate. heard of Moving Titan Retreat, hats off. Check it out online. Yes, tip that hat. Yes, I'm definitely coming not wearing a hat. A great job. <laughs> this is going to be the future of conferences, I think. You know, like basically giving people a voice. You know, we had people like Winston, Travis Weathers up. Like these guys are our leaders in their space, and even Greg uh, from USA Homeless Things to share what they can do to help. But it's not even that. It's just like the Tommy Mellows, the Andy Elliott's, like. There's Reagan Wise, Reagan as well. Like, um, I and Sean Crane, I, I got fire yeah. in me when I go back to kind of hit it, hit the ground running right. I don't want to lose that fire, I want to continue the accountability calls. Um, and I think that's really gonna help us all. Like, I know, um, Nikal, you're already talking about some changes you want to implement when you get back. I mean, what was your big takeaway? You know, it's funny that you mentioned changes because, uh, you know, you mentioned Sean Crane and you know, he. We connected after his presentation because, you know, we have some similar backgrounds in, in that regard. And, you know, we're just relating stories back and forth. And he does this whole fitness programming. You know, it's hashtag 365 MFR. I'll let you, you know, decipher what the MFR stands for. Yeah, I don't know. But, you know, his his follow ups were so good that this morning he called me at like 630 a.m. and was like, are you all in? Are you all in? And, and let's let's actually, I want to talk about that for a second because you have someone that shared a story. And one of the big things I think we learned from these last few days is when we are talking about our businesses, how vague are we? Are we descriptive? Are we really going in depth uh, when we are posting material? Is it just, here's a picture of our truck and we're like, hey, hire us, yeah. hashtag moving day. Or are we actually being descriptive in how we're sharing our pictures? How are we sharing our content? Uh, you know, from the actual post verbiage to reels. And also then what's our follow-up game afterwards? So here you got someone that shared his story with us, right? Then afterwards, when I just thought this was his story, it was an inspiring story about his life and what he had to go through and where he moved to. But then he wasn't pumping down by now, by now, by now, by now. He actually took you aside and had one-on-ones and then said, hey, this is my business. This is what I do. It's a really simple platform. And I'm going to show you results. Now, it, we were talking with him. I know Nikal was talking with him last night. And then I kind of joined in this conversation as well, too. And it was not a, a pressure point sale. But it was, hey, this is what we can do. Maybe we can even give you a group discount. Whatever it was, you walked away going, all right, like I'm interested. And this happens all the time on moving day when we're talking to our customers, like how heavy is our sale tactic? But what you just said is he did a follow-up. Like it was the next day when you actually slept on it and you're like, ah, like, am I going to jump on this? Am I not? It was a, Hey, here's a text. Are you in? Are you out? Like, love to have you on board. And you felt like, you know what I'm going to do? Like, let's go for this. Are we doing that in our own businesses? Like, are we actually being descriptive in what we're offering? Are we doing it so that we feel, um, a personal connection with our customer as like a nice follow-up and then are we being the guys and having our sales team the guys the gals whoever you want and on your team doing a follow-up the next day like is that a consistent thing or it's hey man thanks so much or, you know we talked we chatted you did this whole thing and then four days later it's the Hey, I'm just following up, right? Remember, I remember listening to someone says like, don't ever send an email that says just following up because that's like an automatic spam delete and you've already lost it. Like that person doesn't even know who the fuck you I'm are. I'm going to write that one down, Mark. On. <laughs> that's a nugget. <laughs> right? Nuggy time. Yeah. So, so you know, our, to me, that was like already one thing uh, that I've taken away going, 
are am I descriptive enough in what we do? And I think for anybody that was not there, one of the things I'm ever gonna throw a nugget out there is when you send out your salespeople, are they coming on their tablets with video content, photos? Like, are they just showing up with a brochure, uh, you know, and uh, a business card going, here you go, this is my business? Or are they saying, hey, wait a second? And they might not have a tablet. Let's say you don't have tablets. They should have a video. They should have um, uh, something on their phone, a photos showing, this is our movers. These are our crews. These aren't Photoshop images or like iStock, you know, hey, I made a chat GPT you know, Dali image that's AI generated. These are our crews. These are our guys. This is how we treat our furniture and, and, and being descriptive in that, what we're offering. Yeah, I think you're right. And Nikal, you got to take away from that. Yeah. Um, back to the whole Sean Crane and, you know, his, it was interesting how he, you know, I honestly didn't know what he offered after his presentation. You know, he did his presentation and I knew he was a fitness guy and I knew he was jacked, but, uh, didn't know exactly what he offered and in his first couple follow-ups whether they were in person or a friendly text he was just checking in with me saying hi hello you know how you doing um you know it's sean i just wanted to give you my number blah 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 and then and then it kind of progressively is like you know and he knew after i shared my story what i wanted and then he went into his pitch and it was very heartfelt and genuine and I, tailored he listened to your story and tailored his pitch around you and what you need. His whole thing was like, get your mind right and the, the rest will follow. And we saw that with Andy Elliott, of course, um, you know, and he basically was just shooting stats at us. The amount of one liners at this conference, I thought was amazing. Mark mentioned one earlier, you know, do turkeys run with stallions? No, they do not. You know, um, they had a lot of statistics for us and, you know, I got a lot from this and, you know, I think happiness, you know, Sean Crane, happiness is inner peace, you know, and I think a lot of people hold in stress and they don't know, you know, they have no direction, you know, and I, and the whole, the whole theme of this whole conference was fitness, right? Would you agree? Totally. And it was a think about, you know, of one thing that another takeaway that I really felt was leading by example. And, you know, uh, you can razz on Andy Elliott as much as you want. You can watch his YouTube videos if you haven't. And, you know, there was always this big hype. And he even makes a joke about himself saying, well, if I have a, if you don't have a six pack, I'm going to fire you. I don't think it was a joke, but no, it, but it was, you know, for him, it was a, a standard that he was trying to say. It wasn't out of like, kind of like the ordinary statement that I feel like people were shocked by. So I can see it being looked as like just like this crazy statement made, but I no, think and I and I and I had time to actually sit down and I was uh, having dinner with uh, his wife and himself, and we were talking about standards. And one of the things that any business owner works on is they say, "Okay, here's my vision statement. You know, here is our goals. Here's our standards of what our company is." And they were saying, you know, when the guys come to the office, one of our standards is you know, making sure that uh, they follow suit to keeping their desk clean, you know, and that's just like a simple one, right? Like just keeping like yourself tidy. But then they're following up with their spouses and their spouses are going, man, you know, he comes home, his, uh, you know, he, his pants are on the ground, you know, laundry's everywhere. He's a mess. And they said, here's a copy of our standards that we hold in our office. Why don't you post that at home? Because it is about having a standard, not just where you work, but how you live life. And that's the standards that I think, you know, Andy Elliott's team was trying to embody saying, you know, we are, we, these guys wear our shirts because that's what they embody. When they go out to uh, hang out with friends, it's a standard that they hold in life you know, with, with God and faith first, their work ethics, and then the discipline by being fit and, you know, and, and having that um, outlook on life, right? Staying healthy. So, and that was one of the other things that I really took away, which was building a winning team. You know, are you looking for just good employees or are we looking for excellent employees that have your back when shit goes sideways in your company?
I saw a line that you wrote down in your bookmark that said, stop being a business owner and be a coach. Yeah. I thought that was cool. I think, uh, I, I'm just going to say what I took away is I don't think anybody in that room was ready for a guy like Andy Elliott. I think I've been to so many moving and storage conference, van liner shows when AMSA was around. I am everything. No one in any conference room in any moving and storage conference I feel like I've seen something like Andy Elliott. I think he really knocked a lot of people on their ass. And I really liked him. I thought he was really intense. And I don't think a lot of people can resonate with that. But I think a lot of people can too. And he said one other line that I thought was really great. Um, it's not who you are. It's who you're becoming. And that almost gives you like this mental kind of confidence in yourself. Like if you're not happy with yourself, then think about who you're going to become, how you're going to get there. And uh, I'm going to say this line, and I want to hear what you guys have to say. He said, stop saying things that you're going to do, and then you don't do them. You're lying to yourself. You're gaslighting yourself. You're gaslighting the people around you by not staying true to your commitments. Yeah, we were talking and, about uh, that last Yeah, night. yeah, in the jacuzzi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My favorite thing with Andy Elliott, and just to be quick, Matt, um, I want to give you a chance here. I don't care. <laughs> I, mean, I care what you have to say. I, just, yeah. I don't need to talk. Matt wants to golf. My favorite thing from Andy, uh, it, it's a little bit of humor here, but he's like, I, I'm going to go buy. Anytime he enters a market, he buys plywood and he goes and delivers it to the competitors in oh, the yeah. area. He's all, go ahead and put this up over your windows, guys, because I'm shutting you down. Yeah. <laughs> going to put you out of business. Just I love that. Yeah. that was awesome. I thought he was going to do like a mic drop after saying that. Yeah. He's like, like, I'm going to leave a little show with that plywood and say, yeah, yeah lock it up. Now, we've talked about Sean Crane. We talked about uh, uh, Reagan. We talked about uh, Andy Elliott a lot. But we also had Tommy Mello from A1 Garage Door sit there and speak with us. We even like hung out with him uh, afterwards as well, too. And he touched on some things when it comes to sales and our guys, like the service that we perform with our drivers that I feel like we tend to forget. You know, we're always about as moving company owners, let's, we got to teach you how to wrap furniture. We got to teach you how to move furniture, move items. This is the paperwork. This is what's got to get done. But one of the things he said to me was, are you teaching your drivers to smile when they're talking to your customer? And like right now, it makes me even smile thinking about it. I am smiling to you guys going like, hi. And if you were someone like Nikel Murdoch, this guy's got a million dollars smile. <laughs> he does. So he really does. You know, right. uh, you just want to smile back. It like radiates <laughs> happiness. So photogenic, dude. Oh, thank you guys. I appreciate that. Yes. And are we doing that? You know, are we teaching our drivers to do that? One of the notes, you know, like Nikal was saying, like we take away, there were so many quotes and verb, like things to write down on that. One of the things that I really took away was, is they say friends knock and strangers ring the doorbell. Thank I you. have it right here. I was going to mention that friends knock on the door, strangers ring the doorbell. And I thought that was huge. What of our what are our drivers doing? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it really resonated with me. <laughs> I, know you're I couldn't to... tell you. Like, yeah. Right? I mean, so like is that something that you're putting in your like SOPs? Is that like a standard that you're putting in there for our drivers that are showing up? You know, who is that foreman? Who is the moving crew leader that is showing up to the door and before already building a relationship and a rapport by calling the customer, hey, we're 20 minutes out, we're half an hour out. Is there anything that we can get you? Is there anything that you need? Because maybe they're stressed out. Maybe they just wanted a bottle of water because they realized, oh no, like our water's been shut off already or I, our cups are packaged and I don't have nothing to drink from. You know, are we going that extra step? Are we going to the front door and ringing that doorbell or are we knocking because we've now built that rapport with customers? Are we smiling? You know, are we checking in with our customers like halfway through the move? Like, how is that rapport? And they've really touched a lot on that on this retreat going, you know, are we actually building that rapport with them? Like, Hey, uh, how are your kids? Like, how, how, like, how was this part of this move? Was it very difficult? You know, and a lot of that we rely so much on the salesperson to to perform on, but we don't do that as a performance with our movers or and, and people that are listening. Maybe they are right. They are doing that, but I think there's those takeaways going like, are we doing that? 
Matt yeah. like, is, or Dekel, like is that something that just one little thing I was going to add was that un- like when I was on the trucks a lot, you know, I'm not so much anymore only when it's needed, but when I was on the trucks a lot, like when it would come lunchtime and I'm like, Hey, I'd go up to the customer. I'm like, Hey, Mr. Or Mrs. Smith, we're going to take a lunch. You know, we'll meet you at the unload. Um, we're going to, you know, wherever we're going for lunch. Would you like something? Yeah. And it right. just flipped the script. They're like, what do I, do I want something? No, I'm good was usually the answer. I think one person did take me up on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm so I had to get him a burger or whatever. It's always Mr. or Mrs. Smith, man. We need a new one. You know what I mean? Zach. No, I, I like it. It's just it's almost refreshing to hear from time to time. But I, I get what you're saying. Sorry. Just had to... What do you think, Matt? What do you have? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I've struggled with that a nice little touch. bit, you know, when presenting the bill. You know, Andy talked a little bit about that as well. And um, you know, what are they doing when they do that moment, right? We've we've had problems with that where Hey, customers are a little frustrated and this and that. And I'm, I wonder, I'm like, we've, we've kind of laid out the steps. We've told guys, Hey, you need to let clients know. We've even checked in the middle of the day. How's this move going? Like we try to lay out all these steps and I'm like, what is that part that these guys aren't doing when they come to the customer? Is it because the bill's so big and these guys maybe make so much less? And at, you know, I mean, like, Oh my gosh, they might think, you know, this company's making so much money that I work for in reality, obviously. It's not the case, but um, do they have confidence going up to the client going, hey, here's $2,000 of value that we added to your life? Um, are they smiling like like uh, Mark says? And I sometimes I doubt that. I wonder where that disconnect is because sometimes that, that bill presenting, it's so funny. You'll be on a move and I'm sure you guys can attest to this where you do such a great job for them. They're so happy through the day, but once they get that bill... <laughs> and next thing you know it's like so how do you keep that from from not happening and i always say it's the domino effect i try to preach to my team it's like we can't let one domino fall because as soon as that first domino falls what happens the rest they all fall, fall. that's they, right they keep going in line so prevent that from happening and and how do we do that so i took so much inspiration away um i do want to say one thing though i'm sorry austin that you're not on this podcast josh Jason, <laughs> I know you guys had to fly out early this morning. We love you guys. That's um, awesome. one quick thing too, Mark. Sorry, uh, Let me drop you in. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're good. <laughs> Is the for those of you that don't know Matt personally, he's probably one of the nicest people on the oh, planet. He could nicest. present me with a ten thousand dollar bill, and I would just sign like whatever you want, Matt. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> Cal. Yeah. Thank you. Totally. Yeah. I got a I, question for the moving owners here, since I'm not, and it's kind of what you guys were just talking about. I mean, when you're on that truck, when you had to be on that truck and you were the one actually closing that, that sign final estimate or whatever it is, you know, you guys are doing like you have so much more confidence, you being the business owner, the face of the company, knowing your people skills and salesmanship ability and all that. Um, that's a little more reassuring. I would feel like for you guys to be the one in front of the customer, then I don't know, then maybe just your everyday guy that loads the truck and stuff. Is that, is that right? Or is that a different feeling for you guys? I mean, I think, you know, I was about to respond saying, well, you just need a little bit of empathy, but I always feel that empathy is a learned and trained trait and a characteristic that you have to evolve on because a lot of people everybody just stories about themselves let's be honest where i am whether i'm an owner or not i want to get paid at the end of the day i've done the job i've done the work i'm sweaty i just want to go home whether it's to my couch my wife my kids you know whatever situations in your life i've done my time and i want you to pay the bill And a lot of the times what happens is, is you forget that that homeowner or that business owner or the, 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 whatever customer you're working with also has struggles too. whatever they're going through. Maybe they're moving because there was a death in the family. Maybe they're moving from a divorce. Maybe they're moving because they lost a job. You don't know. And if you haven't built that rapport throughout that move, and now you're presenting them with a bill that could be more than what they anticipated. A hundred dollars is still a hundred dollars difference. A thousand dollars more, five hundred dollars more. Like, you know, you have to have empathy for that customer and go, look, ma'am, look, sir, the move took a bit longer. We really worked hard. 
you know, we understand your situation. This is what it is, you know, and a lot of the times they will resonate with you. So I don't sometimes think it's just because you're a business owner, it's easy swag. It is something that you have to continually train your guys on. And then if you have guys that are not good at it, then you need to like flip it and say, you know what, maybe let the helper do the bill. Like, and find someone that can lead that crew that can under have that characteristic. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? I just, I think it's, I think it's tough. Like, it, it is tough, Mark. And I, I don't think there's an easy solution. You know, every time I'm presenting with these things, whether it's movers with tools, whatever it is, I always think there's an easy solution and I try to solve it. But what I realized the old way was the same way, right? It, it's, it doesn't matter. And, and sometimes we focus on that. One of the things I did early on, you know, and I was on the truck for seven years myself. Um, very alone in my thoughts and that. But uh, once I did back away just enough, my guys would call me, hey, the bill's done. And I would call the lady because I, I was doing my own sales at this point. I was trying to do everything. And I would call, I would call and say, hey, ma'am, hey, so the guys just got done. It looks like we're at four and a half hours, you know, and I'd run the bill myself so that my guys didn't have to have that conversation with the customer, the person that sold it did. And sometimes I think we have salespeople doing so much and other people, I wonder if that's still a golden nugget. Like, can we have the bill get done and say, hey, what I'm going to have you do is talk to, you know, the person who had set you up and they're going to run you through the whole billing process. You can pull it up on your iPad and you can follow along while we're on speaker. And I think that really helps too, because sometimes that kind of takes our guys out of that equation and can help with their tip, right? Like, I do agree with Andy. Our goal is to get money in their pockets, right? I don't want to have them come to me and go, we didn't get a tip, right? I'll ask them all the time, like, did you guys get a tip? I think sometimes they're like, no, because they think I'm like writing it down for tax purposes or something. <laughs> 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 totally not. That's funny, Matt. I also asked too. And it's just because I want to know if they got taken care of. Yeah, yeah. I want to know the client had that integrity to think of them that way, right? But also, if not, why not? What did we do to make them feel that way, right? We're in a tipping industry. I know everything is crazy right now with tips, right? You go to the grocery store, they want a dollar. I mean, it's wild, but um, we are still a very tip heavy industry. And I think that needs to be a little bit uh, placed and respected. So anyway. Agreed, Matt. Well said. Thank you. Good boy. I'm salty. <laughs> <laughs> Final thoughts. Yeah. As we wrap this up. Uh, I'll, I'll jump on that Monday morning. We're going to be back at the office. We have time, you know, a couple hours on a plane to, to debrief ourselves, write down what we've been learning, you know, and put an action plan maybe in place. We still have Sunday as well too, but, uh, you know, I'll, my point is, is that Monday's going to come quick. What are some action items that you really want to instill? With your team, with your company, Nikel. Thank you. I know I jumped on that a little early, Mark. Sorry about that. Um, I'm just excited. You know, I know. Yeah, we're here. all excited. <laughs> <laughs> I I love that you you know said Tommy Mello. You know, because we kind of glossed over that. But to me, that was I think the I don't want to say the you know hierarchy of the speakers here, but he personally for me was the best. Then I took away the most. Um, and my final thoughts and what you know. I wrote down pages and pages and pages of stuff, probably too much. Um, so I want to go through all this, but you know, I think it's a sniper approach, you know, take a, a few bites at a time, plan what you want to execute. And one of my biggest things is buy in from the employees. And Tommy Mello's big points was equity options and investments and, you know, ways that they can earn more money other than just an hourly rate, right? For whatever your hourly rate is in your industry or in your company, you know, make it to where like we do, you know, bonuses on five-star reviews, a little more on the photo review. It's not a lot, but it is something. Um, and I think he brought up points where there's more dig deep, find something that they can invest in and, you know, you'll get more out of that employee, you know, and in the long run, the company will be stronger and will, uh, be far more successful. Right. So. And I like what we were talking about just before the podcast where, you know, for myself, I want to go back and go, I need to structure my sales department like 10 exit, like 20 exit. Like, I feel like there's so much being left on the table that we're not able to grow on because I am not being a leader for them enough and having proper goals that are attainable 100%. But what can we do? 
And then I'm also thinking in my head, am I going in there like fucking Andy Elliott? Like, you know, am I leaving that front door open going like it's the this or the highway, right? <laughs> and you said something to me, you're like, you know, I want to take each person's uh, personality and characteristics from each speaker and blend that together for my meeting. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, it's like I'm making a pizza pie, right? <laughs> Get me that, you know, a little bit of sauce and whatever I'm going to put it for toppings. And I love that. And I'm going to hone back on all my notes and kind of go, this is how I'm going to structure my meeting. What about you, Matt? <laughs> I, I don't know. The pizza pie is pretty good. <laughs> like, like a pizza pie. <laughs> Lady and the Tramp, the movie. Oh, is it? That's or is that good. Spaghetti. Yeah, that's spaghetti. Spaghetti. Uh, <laughs> Zach, you. We didn't eat any pizza on this trip. Yeah, so. that's weird. It's good weird. for me. Yeah, it is a good thing, right? <laughs> We ate well. We we did the VIP option. Well worth it. We can all agree in the fact that we didn't have to plan a bunch of stuff. Like, um, unfortunately, in this group and kind of in my peer group, I kind of feel like I'm I'm the guy who's like just always. I have to be the guy who wins. And I'm like, hey guys, we're going to do this tonight. Hey guys, we're doing this. And I know you guys are probably like, dude, fucking Matt, bro. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. And so it was good to like take a step back and have that planned for us, so we didn't have to think about yeah, it. Yeah, no, that was great. Um, I really didn't want to go to Chuck E. Cheese, but you're my friend, and so I was just all right. Let's I know. go. You guys are off topic here. What are you doing come Monday morning? <laughs> oh, you're right. Uh, Monday, come Monday morning, I am um, excited to no longer announce things that I don't plan on doing in a extremely timely manner, straight up in all aspects of my life. Uh, I gotta say, if everyone's got to be guilty of that at some reason, but I know I am. And I'm excited to have this mentality where I'm going to stop making excuses in certain areas of my life. And the Tighten Up Conference, man, dude, those guys drove it home. They hired dudes to speak to all of us. And it worked. I mean, I saw it on a lot of people's faces and I'm hearing it now. So, yeah, that's where I'll be on Monday. Unstoppable today. Perfect, perfect song for this. <laughs> Maybe should I make this unstoppable? Should I make this my ringtone? I just got the new I iPhone 15. Pro. I think you should. Is that one of our sponsors? This. I just no. like i15. Yeah. Um, Back her up. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um I'm freaking fired up. Um, I see that, you know, with moving letters and, and just all full transparency, it's the new shiny toy, right? And I wanted to challenge myself to do something else. Um, because for a very long time. I felt alone in my head. I didn't have friends like you guys in the moving space and for 16 years. And so now it's like, boom, sometimes I'm looking at I haul, I move and we're up this year. Our reviews are up. We're doing a great job for people, but I kind of feel like it's a little bit this way. Right. And, and how do we get that back up? And I think it starts with me, the core the leader. Hockey stick effect. Exactly. So like, how can I get back in and, and make sure that those seeds are planted? I think one of those people said that you left. You left and you thought it was a good time and, and maybe I left too early. Good one. You probably did, right? And I pro I probably did in a way. Didn't we have this conversation in the Uber to Top Golf this morning I about your we GM? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And so, you know, he he's a he's a great GM. We do a great job together, but I'm not leading him enough, right? I'm not putting it out there to to get him the guidance that he needs to to continue to succeed. And uh it starts with me, right? It starts That's from the what top. I was gonna say. It's it right, right here. Yeah. yeah. And so if I can't do that, then how can I expect my team to? And same with I think even Winston said something about hiring. Like you're gonna hire and maybe you guys have that quote, but it's like you're choosing to hire these people, right? Like why why aren't why aren't you involved in this right these people are representing you your brand and you're gonna not have a say in that <laughs> what is wrong with you so i i think that that's my big takeaway it's like how that implementation looks man i mean my mind you know like austin's moves a million miles per hour i can't stay focused but there are some core things like you said that i need to break down and do that sniper effect focus on those three core things of how we can thread the needle more um and i always love what austin says to you one percent better every day i sorry i'm dropping austinisms because he's not here so we can get him a little in the mic okay i like that matt so, i like it anyway that's the big and, one and uh you're talking about winston davis from move up consulting yes so just a little shout out to winston if you're looking I for movers you're awesome. looking for you know management individuals within your company check out move up consulting you can also listen to him on my podcast on some of the earlier episodes that i had him on the show great guy 
And yeah, worth definitely checking out. He actually sure. absolutely killed it with his presentation. Oh, he did. Too. No, he's yeah. fire, bro. Yeah. He, and I, I told him, I was like, I like how you kind of got a little vicious at the end. Oh, his intensity in you his know? eyes. I was like, damn. You could tell he's thoroughly <laughs> passionate about what he does and what he brings to the table. And shout out to him going to start a moving company so he he can get in the thick of it with us. And I think that's the coolest thing. I was very happy to have a genuine connection with Winston um, and to continue with that. So nice. definitely awesome. Well, look, guys, we're wrapping this up. We're going to carry on with a little bit of uh, golf, I think. Let's right? Let's knock some out of here. And uh, till next time. And check us out. Check us out. Whoa. Sorry, guys. It's a massive dragonfly that just kind of flew at us. I thought it was like a napkin or some shit. We're going to end this right here. So, till next time.